it has actually broke the ring on here in places and that's why when you start driving it puts light on so I've had to change the wheel bearing to sort out the ABS I keep an old set of impact sockets a rusty old set that I use if I need to hammer these out I wouldn't use a socket that I'd try and get a ratchet on the end there after that because they can easily get out of shape you find one that fits it so you're not going to damage it and knock it out but I use a tool to press it all back together okay once you've knocked it out I kind of hold that with one hand and rest that in the center so it'll be resting on on that in the center of there and I just hit away whilst that's in the air usually they come out sometimes they're not that easy though but usually a few swings with a big hammer and they come out it's likely that that's what's going to happen to you. The inner race of the bearing stays on this shaft. On the hub. See it's no longer in there. So what I do is put a grinder on that. Grind it most of the way through, not all of the way. And then when I hit it with a chisel, I crack what's left so it's got a fracture in it. And I can knock that bit right off. Now that I'm going to be grinding, I've got the safety specs on. And I'll show you how to grind it just now. Okay, gonna grind it. See there, I've not ground all the way through it, so I'm not all the way through yet, but when I hit that hard with a chisel, it'll crack it, and then it'll come right off. Once you hit it with a chisel, you get a crack in there. I almost can't even see it now. Oh, there, just where my thumb is. You see it right there? Going across right there. Hairline crack. So the ground hasn't gone right through it. And there's no marks on there. That's just how the hub looks, the shine on it. There's no grind marks on it. So that's how you would take it off if it ever gets stuck on like that. Don't do what some people do and take this out of the new bearing and leave the old one on there and just put it together because that's just harshy and you're going to need to replace your bearing again if you do that. Now that that's removed, this snap ring here, I really find it hard to believe that this has just been changed, although the story is that it has been I'm wondering what they have done. So this snap ring comes out next. So you use your pliers or whatever you've got. Circlet pliers are designed to take that out after you've sprayed it up with WD-40 or something like that, any penetrating oil. If they don't come out, what I have done is used a drill right next to the end of it and drilled through that way so I can get a small punch and just knock that, not the circlet, through enough to work it around with my fingers, so with a screwdriver I mean, and leave it right out. But that's the last resort, but that does work, and you can always put a little smear of silicon over the hole. That's what you do if you can't get them out, and these little holes start to snap off when you're trying to get them out. Okay, if you have a wheel bearing tool such as this, you'll be able to take it off on, on the car, but I'm, I've took it off the car anyway. But I don't have a press, so I'm using this instead, and it's just a finely threaded bolt. Quite a chunky one, though. Um, and I'm going to just hold it with a spanner on this end, and turn it with a big ratchet on that end, and it should knock it through. Sometimes you have to help it by hitting the end of here a little bit. Only gently, otherwise you end up mushrooming the end, and that's no good to use anymore. But it will go, I found. We'll change this wheel bearing out. 
once you've got that out, the new one goes in a lot easier. It's getting it out that's awkward. Okay, this is the idea once it's in off. Like I say, you can do this in the car. On the car, I mean, but I've chose to take it off. But once you've got it loosened, you just turn this. And I get this on the floor so I can put my foot on it. But that's the idea, you just screw it in. Now that I've got it apart, and the old bearing out of it, uh, we, we, well, there's the old bearing, right? That bit stayed on the hub earlier on, and we got that off. Now we've got this bit out by pressing it out. This doesn't look as messed up as I thought it would do. To be honest, I think it's just got play in it and it's worn. But I think it was mainly the cage, which is here, that holds the, the ABS speed sensor, the wheel speed sensor, at a set distance from there with the air gap. Well, it wasn't going to be right with this being all broken. So, put the new one in. This is the way it'll be on the car. Now the strut's furthest away from you and the wheel would be furthest to you. Right here when you see it. That means the ABS ring with the magnets goes that way. See that's metal. That's rubber. So we're going to go in that way. I'm going to put a bit of grease around that though before I slide it in. And we'll insert that into there first. And we can put the new snap ring into there. But before we put the bearing in, we need to make sure we put the new cage in first. Because the cage goes in first. Very important. Where did I put that? I'll have a look around for that and put it in there. There's the new cage in at the bottom of the hole there. It's got three spring clips that hold it in place. I've also lightly greased that so that it'll help the bearing going in. On the other side, see here, is where the bearing will slide into that. Where am I looking? Right there. Hold on, just about to drop my phone. Bit of grease there, but I'll wipe that out of the way. See that? So we got these spring clips. There's like one there, one there, one there, so you can't just change this unless you're changing the sensor, uh, the, the bearing, I mean. If you've got a problem, you need to change that. Now the old one, I don't even, the old one doesn't quite look the same at, at all. In fact, yeah, it's almost like, I, I've obviously changed the shape a bit when I've tried to get it out. But I don't remember seeing it having that concave shape to it. Convex, whatever it is. This one was always more flat, so I think that's why the air gap's been wrong all along. And it's worn the end of the ABS sensor. But that's okay, the air gap's critical, so at least it'll be right now. Okay, there it is, set up. Slightly different. I've just done this side. I'm just using a big plate because it doesn't need to go out. It's just going in. This side, I'll wind it in, put it on the inner race because it's going to end up on the inner race anyway. You know, if I go across the top, it's only got to go so far. It's got to go the rest of the way pushing on the inner race. So you could, if you want, use the old bearing and put it on top and wind that in. But it's okay. To do it like this because that's exactly how the CV, uh, the drive shaft nut at the end of the shaft is just doing the exact same thing. So we just wind it in on the ratchet. Oh, if you see the camshafts in the background, for any of you who've seen that video that I'm doing with the oil leak coming out of the defaser pulley right here, but that's a different video. These are second hand but new to me camshafts. And I'm going to put it in and see what's going on, if it's any better. Anyway, that's a different video, and you can watch that if you like. Uh, so I'll just tighten this up and show you how easy it is. It's kind of not easy one-handed, though. But, uh, ain't that easy one-handed. Try and find somewhere I can rest my phone. See, I've lost my tripod. Or it broke, actually. 
Christ, if any way I could do this, no. Nah. Well, that's all you get to see, the ratchet going that way. There you go. And the bearing is coming in. Like that. So I'll just, you get the idea. I'll just wind it the rest of the way. That's the first stage of it. The bearing goes into here. And you see the rubber side with the magnets is on this side. Right next to where the sensor is going to go. And that's why the cage has to go in first. Because there's no way you're going to do it after. It only goes in this way. Now we put the hub inside to that. Inside the bearing. Same as before, I've lubed up anything that's going to be slid into it. But it's important when I'm going to press on here that I don't just put a plate across. Because when this... When the flange comes through, it's just going to push the inner bearing and try and separate it and bend this cage out of shape. So we need to make sure we're pressing on that. But unfortunately, my smallest size tool is too big for this little thing, so I'm going to use the old inner bear the bearing inner race that came off before. That can't go around with the big end against that, it's just too big. I turn it round, I can use it as a spacer, and then I can use it so I can press on to that. So we're pressing on to the bearing on the inner race so we don't pull it out of itself. Now it's set up, that inner race is right in there where you can hardly see it. And there it is, I'll leave that ready to go in. So we'll just screw it all together. Where's the old bearing? I don't know where to put the old bearing. I was going to show you what I'm pressing on. Okay, here's the old bearing. So I can't press on this seal with the magnets. So I'm using the inner race. I'll just press on the inner edge of this inner one. Because I'm using it back to front. If I used it the other way around, it would still only fit that. But I'm using it the inner face. So it's the thinner bit that's from the inside. I'll be pressing on that. Just to step it up a bit so that I can easily wind it in without crushing those magnets and anything like that. You don't want to just press it in that way in a big press without having something under there. Like I say, you're just going to push the inner part of the bearing out. All you're going to do as it's going in, the inner part of the bearing will just push out of here like when I took it apart. Okay, now I've got one complete wheel bearing done, ready to go back on the car. A lot smoother than it was. There you go. There's the old one. Now all I've got to do is put this back on the car. It's getting dark outside, so I want to get it done quick, so I'll not be filming this. I didn't film taking it off the car either because it's uh, pretty easy. Uh, you can see the bolts that you need to take out and there's loads of videos on it. The main point was the wheel bearing, anything that's important whilst assembling it so that you just know if there was anything to let you know about. Uh, thanks for watching this and I hope something in here was helpful for you.